Let us start our countdown with the number 10, Inextinguishable Greek Fire. The Greek fire was invented in the 7th century by a Jewish architect who fled to Constantinople from Syria after the Arabs attacked his home city. It was a liquid concoction placed in a pressurized furnace, tube-like container called a siphon. It was designed to be attached to the prow of specially designed Byzantine ships that pressurizes liquid before shooting it out, igniting jets of fire across the water. Unlike any other fire, the Greek fire can burn even in water, so in the 7th century, the Greek fire was also known as the sea fire. The fire attaches itself to stone, wood, or even to a flesh, yes, human flesh, and it is impossible to be put out even by water. The thought of it just makes me squeamish. So, your question might be, what did the Greeks use to put out the fire? It is interesting that the fire can be put out by three things. Vinegar, sand, and even old urine. There have been a lot of great minds who were interested in the wonders of the Greek fire that, in 2002, a TV show, The Mythbusters of National Geographic, took a guess on the possible ingredients of the fire. They used a mixture of pine resin and light crude oil, and a bronze pump, well, their experiment destroyed the ship but inconclusive that they used the right ingredient to create a fire. To this day, the Byzantine Empire had protected their secret for thousands of years and have made scientists and curious minds alike to still continue on finding the best combinations to create the fire. Who knows, someday, someone might just get it right. At number 9, the mysterious Damascus steel recipe. The Damascus steel is known for its wavy and dark pattern or the watery pattern on the metal. The swords made of Damascus steel were hard and flexible. It has keen edges and above all, they are beautiful. Weapons that are made of Damascus steels are way more superior than those that are made from iron. During the 11th century crusades, European soldiers talked about the swords wielded by Islamic warriors that could flex back with no damage, can bend 90 degrees, and can slice through the floating handkerchief. Although today, the Bessemer process, which means involving the removal of impurities from the iron by oxidation with air being blown through molten iron, was known to surpass the quality of the Damascus steel. It still remains the most outstanding material, particularly for its day. Although a lot of scientists have tried to replicate the original Damascus steel, they were still unable to do so because the Damascus steel was cast from wood, a type of steel made in India thousands of years ago, and the creation of wood have stopped in the 1700s. At number 8, Indecipherable Voynich Manuscript I bet even the famous Robert Langdon of the Dan Brown novels would not be of use for deciphering the Voynich Manuscript. The Voynich Manuscript is a bit larger than a modern paperback novel. It contains 246 fragile pages of bound vellum. It contains a text written from left to right with illustrations and diagrams found in most pages. It was believed to be created by someone in the 15th century in Central Europe. In 1912, Wilfred M. Voynich acquired the book. Other than that, no one really knows what the book is all about. However, in 2018, the father and son team of Turkish researchers, who call themselves Atta Team Alberta, claims that they have translated 30% of the manuscript. They said that the Voynich manuscript is written phonetic Old Turkish. Other researchers who have seen the manuscript mention that the book, because of its illustration and diagrams, can be keys to magnificent discoveries or understanding especially in the field of science. Two years later, there is still no information if the researchers have progressed in decoding the script. Now I know why it's called indecipherable for a reason. At number 7, Mysterious Astrological Calendar, Antikythera Mechanism Said to be invented by an ancient astronomer, Hipparchus, around 190 BCE, the Antikythera mechanism, according to some researchers, is used by ancient Greeks to predict lunar and solar eclipses, 
chart the movement of the sun, moon, and planets, and even signal the next Olympic Games. It was also known as the world's first analog computer. According to the researchers who have dedicated their time to understanding the mechanism after it was found in a ship at the bottom of the ocean in 1901, said that it was technically complex compared to any known device at least a millennium afterward. In 2006, millions of blog posts about the Antikythera mechanism being machine made by the aliens or a machine designed for time traveling. To date, scientists and researchers are still trying to discover what's the real use of the device. Other than those that were mentioned, I guess this was the inspiration behind Back to the Future movies and all other time traveling movies afterward. At number 6, Zhang Heng's Seismoscope. Zhang Heng's seismoscope looks like a beer barrel. The restored version of the seismoscope by Wang Zendu can be found in the Museum of China. Although it may not serve the same purpose, to look at how the device is designed and is effective, listen to this. On its outer wall of the device are eight perched dragons even distributed. Their heads looking down where their jaw stands slightly open. Within each of their jaws lies a small bronze ball. Crouching on the floor under dragons, we find eight toads, all fours on the ground with their heads raised and all open-mouthed. At the center of the seismograph lies a copper column surrounded by eight levers. In all direction, these connect with dragons perched on the outer walls of the device. When the earthquake occurs, inertia will make the central copper column inclined towards itself a given level, which will activate the mechanism in the outer walls corresponding dragon. It will in turn release the ball in its mouth and will report the direction of the earthquake. The invention is so precise that, regardless of how a team of scientists and archaeologists replicates the device and to be able to provide such a certain mechanism, they can't. At number 5, the Vikings Ulfbert Swords. The techniques and materials used in creating the sword are so intriguing that archaeologists who have discovered the Ulfbert swords are still in awe of the process as to how it could have been possibly made and the type of technologies used to forge such beauty. The technology used to produce the metal where the swords were forged from is so advanced that it would not be invented for another 800 years. In 2014 in Scandinavia, a 9th century Viking grave was found. There was nothing special about the grave except for the Islamic inscription which directly translates to two or four Allah. Did the Vikings work with the creators of Damascus when they forged the Ulfrith swords? If you have known the history of Damascus sword and as to how they were built, it would seem like the Vikings got a hold of some manuscripts on how Damascus steels were made. Well, that is just a plain guess, but who knows? The No Rust Iron Pillar of Delhi Although it has a rustic vibe, the iron of pillar in Delhi is more than 1,600 years old. Scientists and archaeologists alike are baffled and are on an ongoing debate as to why a structure of that old is resistant to rust. The environmentalist says that it is all thanks to the mild climate in India. In short, the structure is built at the right time in the right place. Although, personally, I do not find the statement quite convincing. Let us try to hear the thoughts of the other side. Another scientist has mentioned that it has nothing to do with its environment, but it is all thanks to the materials that the structure is made with. The absence of sulfur manganese in the iron and the presence of phosphorus in a large mass of pillar made the structure rust-free. To date, the great minds are still trying to discover the mystery or science behind the rust-resistant impressive piece of engineering. At number 3, the Phaistos Disc. Another form of code text written in a seemingly giant sugar cookie was discovered in 1908. Some articles have even claimed that the disc is about inventions and how inventions have become innate to humans in their hopes to live a more efficient and convenient life. Some also claims it could be a hymn or a prayer that is dedicated to a matriarchal entity or probably an ancient typewriter. If not for the illustration on the disc, I could have mistaken it for a very old stale cookie. 
At number 2, Romando de Cahedra. At first look, you might mistake it for either a trinket used as a paperweight or a candle holder. But, as what most object in this would imply, there is more to it than meets the eye. Romando de Cahedra measures 4 cm by 11 cm spheroids with 11 flat faces that are made of bronze or a rarer stone. Each face of the Roman dodecahedra is a pentagon and is embellished with a series of knobs on each corner of the pentagon. Multiple of these small trinkets are found in Europe, but there was no mention as to what they are. There have been people who have guessed as to how could these trinkets be used, but personally, this could be a part of something big, a part of a big machine. At number 1, Giant Balls of Costa Rica Workers from the United Fruit Company were clearing lands in Dickies Valley, Costa Rica in the 1930s. From the land, they were able to unearth perfectly round stone spheres. They vary in sizes and in weights, but the biggest sphere found was 16 tons. Archaeologists confirm that the giant balls are from around 200 BC to 800 AD. Scientists were able to find out how the stones were formed into shape. The spheres are granodiorite stones. The stones were placed on top of burning coal or fire of sorts. When the heated part turns to red, another form of the tool will be used to chop off the part. Then leather can be used to soften the edges making it look like perfect spheres. During the earlier years of its discovery, some of these stones with different sizes were lined up so scientists consider that the stones may have been used for atmospheric studies. But no records would prove the theory. Today, vandals have been moving the rocks from their original location, leaving the real purpose of the rocks left unidentified. If it was up to me, I would say they are giant gumballs for giants. Hmm, stupid, I know. Alright, that is it for our list today. Do you know any ancient mysteries that the great minds of today can't seem to figure it out? Let us know by leaving the comments below. I would love it if you would be able to subscribe to our channel and hit like. We would also appreciate it if you would be able to share our content with your friends. We upload new and informative contents every day so you can click the notification bell for you to get updates once a new video is ready for you. So, do you like our list for today? What type of top 10s would you like to see next? Feel free to comment below. Again, this is Jane Lee and see you next time.